What's happening, friends? Welcome to Unlocked. It's another week of Xbox goodness here at IGN. I'm Ryan McCaffrey, joined by the guesting Mark Medina. Good Hello. to see you. Destin's gone. <laughs> Alana Pierce. Great. Marty Sleva. Whoa. Coming up on the show this week, uh, a few interesting news items to talk about. The big one is Xbox moving their E3 press conference uh, to a different time and day entirely. So we'll talk about the ramifications of that and what that means within the context of E3. Plus, we got to play a couple of big upcoming spring releases, those being Prey and Mass Effect Andromeda. So uh, stay tuned for that and more. Let's start, friendos, with... Uh with Prey, I guess. Mm -hmm. okay. We got to play Prey. You I got, got to play, play Prey. I got to play a bunch of Prey. You're going to play <laughs> sure next week. Yeah, well, oh, Alana, are you going to play? Or two weeks from now, whatever week. Oh, yeah, in Boston. Boston. I don't know. Oh, uh, we're both playing Prey next week. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. She's like, oh. <laughs> but yeah, this is a great day. You know, I, before I, I give you kind of my impressions, I'm curious. What if, because all we've seen up until this hands-on event I got to go mm -hmm. to was... Uh, was just the trailers, the E3 yep. reveal, and then a, a couple of gameplay trailer beats along the way. So, becoming an object. Yes. So what have your guys' takes been on Prey so far just from what they've shown us? That I want it. I want it. You could be a, b a boy or a girl. You can possess cups, and there are zero vagina slash butthole doors. Yeah, that's true. That you know of. That I know of. That you know of. Yeah. I don't even know how to follow that up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it just looks really cool. I, I, I'm I, worried. I'm, I'm not great at stealth games, so I'm worried about how much of the stealth aspect is going to be, like, becoming objects. And it's like, hey, that wasn't there before. And that whole thing, like, the new, like, Resident Evil DLC right. got me really <laughs> hard. Uh, so, but it looks really fun. Yeah. So it's not a stealth game. You can kind oh, of try to play it in a stealthy way, but... Mm -hmm. uh, the vibe I, I had been getting from all those trailers was pretty Bioshocky. Even oh, even cool. the art direction mm -hmm. seemed that kind of that kind of Art Deco <laughs> Bioshock type art direction. And there is there are elements of that, but uh, I was very very happy when I got into the game. I played the first hour. It's a straight sort of spiritual successor to System Shock 2, yep. which is uh, Ken Levine's game before Bioshock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of I think the 10 or 20 greatest games of all time in terms of uh gameplay or in terms of narrative in terms of atmosphere the, i mean everything but okay. i mean it, it is a bad things happening on a space station sure. game yeah. so yeah. it's got that thematic equivalent but but just the way it plays and feels okay you know bioshock is it is rapture and it's there are a lot of quiet moments and there you, so you sort of have your powers and you can wander around yep. and there is there is that freedom that element of freedom with the movement here but uh, where it feels more system shocky is uh, there's an inventory system. There's uh, there's more of a role playing feel to it, like you can like kind of that emergent Deus Ex type of gameplay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, Bioshock's a little bit more down the shooter path. I guess it didn't really have an inventory, huh? I never really thought about that. Bioshock didn't have a whole lot of inventory yeah. management. It was just a lot of unlocks, and you would use everything really quickly. And yeah, and in mm -hmm. uh, in this, you in Prey, you can collect stuff and and use it as resources to make other things. And, Are there side quests? Uh, yes, there are definitely plenty of things to do. So to piggyback. To piggyback off that, is it an open world like Bioshock, where Bioshock was like kind of yeah, open it's it, it isn't similar in that sense to where it, it opens up into larger areas like but it, it kind of like careens you to go certain ways at times. I mean, there you have your you have your main objective, but there are these huge open areas to oh. go. Like if you want to go try and break into somebody's office, there's four different ways to do that. Or if yep. you just want to make a beeline for whatever your primary objective is, you can mm -hmm. go try to do Without, that. Like Dishonored, yeah. Definitely, yeah, and, and which it, it makes is sense. It's arcane. Yeah. It is an arcane yeah, it's game. Arcane Austin, not mm -hmm. Arcane Leon, but I'm sure both studios worked on both games. Right, um, and which Arcane does come from the same lineage as Six System Shock. That's yeah, the, same, I, the roots of the same family tree. I talked to uh, Ricardo. I believe it's pronounced Barre, B E R E. I talked to him afterwards. He's the lead designer, and yeah, he mentioned that their team has. Bioshock veterans on it, mm -hmm. Deus Ex veterans mm -hmm. on it, System Shock Two veterans on it. So the lineage is all there, yeah. and, and the point is like. For me, I know you, Marty, you and I were talking about this just in the office that I am so happy to be really, really enthusiastic about this game after the first hour because I want it to be great because it's a single player focused first person game. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I want more of those. Yeah. So I want this to be good and then I want it to be successful yeah. if it's good mm -hmm. so that we keep getting them. Yeah. Hashtag Dishonored 2 Game of the Year again. 
<laughs> I don't think yeah, the I don't think the votes closed. You can do that twice. But it did well. Does Prey it have happen. any multiplayer aspects to it at all? Nope, no multiplayer. Just all yeah, yep. I mean oh, Bethesda's been great. good at that. I mean Doom had multiplayer that no one snack maps or whatever they were called. But yeah, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, with between Wolfenstein and Doom and Dishonored, we're getting good campaigns that's, out that's of them. That's true. Is there any reason? I guess without going into narrative spoilers, that yeah. this game is called Prey, not anything else. I went ahead and asked him afterwards in our in our interview, which uh, it's up on IGN in, in video form. And uh, I expected a, a total PR answer, uh, and I was surprised to get what I thought was a pretty refreshingly honest answer. He, lit he Ricardo literally told me, well, uh, Bethesda owns that IP, and it's, it's really hard to name games, and the mm. sort of name fit with what they were doing. Mm. Uh, so mm. the fact that the publisher owned the name, and they weren't doing anything with it, and they wouldn't have to go through all the trademark and IP mm -hmm. junk, which can apparently can be a... A huge hassle when you're trying to name a game. Wow. They just took it. So I, I thought that was a fairly refreshing yeah. answer. Of it was there and it was easy. It was easy yeah. and it fit and it fit. So it's, why not? It's not like mm. Prey has a lot of brand power behind it. Exactly. Like, I it mean, was an it's, early 360 game that some of us hold somewhat fondly. It was because very there was good. Nothing else to play. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no. But, but, but you're bad. right. There, yeah. It's not like that was a huge monster hit in no. 2006 or 2007 yeah. mm -hmm. that that suddenly this game is treading all over just by virtue of stealing its name mm -hmm. so from what you've played is this is this game gonna hit is it gonna be a hit i mean you just never know with these things <laughs> right like the the first hour good start you yeah. know hopefully the rest of the game and and arcane's pedigree certainly mm -hmm. gives a little bit of confidence but you are looking forward to it i'm very looking forward to it and yeah i mean if it it again we we've talked about it before bethesda is mm. the one publisher that seems to be absolutely doubling down on single player narrative driven mm -hmm. first person which is shooters. great because the single player narrative driven games are really pretty much good. all great good. yeah yeah like they yeah. have very good games it they, would suck they've if we had got a, studio a good track that record yeah but yeah. Uh, i did also want to ask how is or is it is prey more like bioshock than it is like dishonored and how i'm expecting it to be really similar to dishonored yeah, I mean it's it's it would probably lean a little bit more in the dishonored direction. Mm -hmm. But again, for me, having you know, dishonored for whatever reason, we you and I have talked about this, it just never quite hooked me, even though it totally should have. It's the I exact was the same kind with of the game. first one. The second one rolls. But uh <laughs> and I just I haven't gotten to the second one. Play but it. but yeah, System Stop Shock it. 2, all time favorite of mine, and it's it just took me right back to System Shock 2 in the very best of ways. So. I wish they'd release that. Just downloadable for consoles, let people play. That would be great. Yeah. The System Shock One is getting a remaster, right. but I think it's only for PC. PC. Yeah, yeah it's, that it. was a. Yeah. I believe that was a Kickstarter. Yeah. So that's yeah. happening, and then there is uh, War Inspector himself is working on System, System Shock, Shock Three with yeah. some of the, the other original team members. I believe it's uh, Other Side Entertainment. I think yeah. is the name of the developer. And again, that's I think just PC for now. But but yeah, System Shock Two. I think it's on GOG. Yeah. So, but yeah, for console, you can't, you know, there's Guardians no way to the galaxy. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Different Thank GOG. You. Oh, dang. He's Sorry, Marty. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, so anyway. I played System Shock 1 for PC. I loved it. Yeah. So if Prey's anything akin to that, I'm super excited. So, yeah, putting in a good word for System, Sh for System Shock 2 for Prey. <laughs> uh, and if you want to hear oh. more about it and see more footage, there is plenty of that on IGN.com. Uh, I worked really hard website. on it. <laughs> yeah, it's a website some people yeah. like to go to sometimes. Sometimes. So let's move on to game you got to play, Alana, that yeah. no one in the public, no one in the media, anybody else has, had gotten a shot at. They've been keeping it real close to the vest, and that is Mass Effect Mass Andromeda. Mass Effect Andromeda. All right, so I'm going to go. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> we played about... You, it'll be, this will be a spoiler-free discussion, to be yeah, clear. Yeah, absolutely, and I have a, uh, a full preview that I tried to detail pretty much everything we encountered that uh, went up this morning that doesn't contain any story or character spoilers whatsoever. I completely kept them out. I tried yeah. to not even talk about the narrative. And I, all, so. I've, I've edited your preview, and it, I can assure you, uh, you are she's being accurate, yeah. spoiler-free. Yeah, I just talk about mechanics for the most part. Um, but yeah, to we be clear, about... I was going to leave because I just don't know anything <laughs> about Mass Effect. I've never played any of them. You, by, uh, really? by virtue of sitting terrible next to... Destin replacement. Yeah, who I know. are you? I know, I'm like the opposite. I'm the anti-Destin. <laughs> you should have you should have absorbed at least something just from no. sitting so I've close to it. I played the first like 20 or 30 minutes and I was like, I, I can't do this. I, Mass Effect 1 rules. Oh, so good. See, but everybody says it's like not good. 
No, they're they're all like, wrong. oh, just just play the second no. one. I mean, you guys did I'll your show. Through, you liked it. Yeah, right? we're playing. We're almost finished with the first one for the first time, and I like it a lot. But we all play yeah, it on like, easy because the combat is not great. Everything else yeah. is still fantastic. Yeah, everyone but, just says, "Oh, just start with the second one." I'm like, I'm not gonna do that. That's what they told me to do for Terminator 2, Ryan, and I couldn't even make. Anyway, it our audience is like, "Please talk about Andromeda <laughs> now. Stop talking about this." No. <laughs> so uh, a group of us went to EA in uh, Redwood the other day. Played yep. four, three, four hours of Mass Effect Andromeda, uh, starting from the very start of the game and then there was a chunk where they sort of skipped us ahead so that we could see um some of the kind of ship based stuff that yes. we're familiar with so it starts out not going to talk about the narrative at all you you get to a planet uh you get to a planet and it's very very pretty um, you shoot things on this planet uh so the combat is actually really great it's it's currently uh Automatic cover based in that you don't have to press any buttons to get behind cover. Uh, oh, as soon cool. as you are behind cover, it just locks you into it. There are good and bad parts about that. Sometimes yeah. it's a little glitchy and it does things that you don't want it to. Um, but for the most part, that is what you, you are doing when you are shooting is getting behind cover and using your jetpack, which you can use to strafe left to right, which is super fun. Great for dodging things. And How does also the pop out system work if it's automatic cover? What does do it do you, like you just pull, do the, you left just pull the left down. trigger and your guy just pops out? Uh, y yes. Okay. Yeah, left trigger and right trigger. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's so that's been my uh, not I don't want to say concern, but a thing that as a as a big fan of the series, watching the bits, the little, the few bits we've seen so far up till now, I've kind of been like, oh, I, is that jump is that jump jet thing gonna kind of just not ruin combat, but just make it weird? So how does it feel? It feels, uh, like, overall, Mass Effect Andromeda feels very different to the other Mass Effect games, I think. And I, like, full disclosure, am scared of saying negative things about it because I know how passionate people are about this. <laughs> but it feels a little more bro-y than I think previous mm. games did. And then it feels a little more like a cover-based bro shooter than it does, like, what I know of Mass Effect. Lean more right. towards, like, Gears of War? And to be kind fair, of? I mean, it's the series has been going that way it's ever true. since from the first one to the second one. And mm -hmm. by, by the time they got to Mass Effect 3, I would say it it was it felt very Gears of War. It's a thermal it shit point. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, uh, there's a lot of conversation in, um, like, while you're exploring and during dialogue, and some of that is just jokes, which is... Not bad stuff, but it's stuff that I'm not used to yet yeah. in Mass Effect. So uh, it, it you definitely feel like you are part of a squad and you are part of a team and you're working towards something together, which is really cool. But to specifically answer your question, uh, the combat totally feels different, but I don't think the jetpack ruins anything. Good. Um, That's all I need to hear. Yeah. And it's really fun to use for traversal. Yeah, I'm, I'm a typical human being. I, ch I fear change. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely different. Well, is it just a uh, horizontal traversal thing or does it also propel you upwards? Both. Oh. Yeah. So uh, there's also things that you can, there's a ton of crafting and you can actually unlock certain augmentations for weapons that will let you do extra damage if you're hovering. So the different things you can do with the jetpack are you can strafe side to side. Uh, if you run and jump, it'll push you further, which is pretty standard. Uh, you can also hover in the air for a small period of time. Um, and the environment of the, the first world that you go to is really diverse, and there's different ways you can get everywhere. One of them is sort of by, we saw them in the trailers, those kind of weird pillar things. Uh, you can basically do some simple platforming on those, or you can just walk on the ground around. So there are lots of different ways to approach things. Um, and I think for the most part, the jetpack is just super fun. Good. That's great. <laughs> yeah. It's it's like really floaty. It feels good. Um, I mean, we're going to be using good. it for 40 hours, so yeah. I, I sure hope <laughs> It's fun. It's, well, there is a, an environment later in the game that uh, kind of reminds me of Hong Kong. Um, mm. It's really, really dense and packed, and there's markets everywhere. There's really cool bars. There was a club that I went to that was playing trap music, which was, like, <laughs> really <laughs> unexpected. <laughs> but uh, Fetty Wap, 2017. <laughs> no Fetty Wap. But, oh, dang. Uh, you could you couldn't jetpack around in that environment. Okay. So I think it's specific to places that you are trying to explore, right. um, which is obviously part of your duty as the Pathfinder. So it is really fun. And like I said, the sound design is one of the things that I was the most impressed by overall. It This game sounds incredible, and I think it does a really good job of making you feel like you are on different planets because everything sounds distinct. That's cool. It's Even the jetpack sounds awesome. When a ship flies nice. over you, it sounds awesome. It's just so bassy, and I feel like they put a ton so of resources you, into that. You can feel the five-plus years of development put into it? Definitely. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, that's a real thing, Mark. Yeah, no, I mean, no, no, no. There are some games where it's, you know... Uh, Okay, fine. I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna make some people mad, but like Recore is a game that yeah. like there's cool concepts there, but you can 
you can tell that the you know pr- that, that game did not have five years of development into right, it. The right, production right, right. values are just not as high. So that's I that's what I mean. Think Mass Effect feels, I mean, I would say incredibly well thought out. Um, How does it look like graphically? So it- the environments look good. Mm-hmm. I'm a little off put by the characters' faces, mm. uh, human specifically. Did you choose uh, male or female rider, Scott or Sarah? Sarah at the start and then Scott at the end. So I okay. played as both intentionally. Nice. Mm-hmm. Um, and they just look a little bit off. Uh, I wrote in my preview, I think they kind of look like Sims 3 era Sims. Mm. They sort of just, something about their eyes is a little bit off. Uh, their eyelashes are incredibly thick and just obviously like stuck to their face. Uh. Um, some weird facial animations. So they, they don't look great but it could just be that i've been playing so many freaking beautiful games lately that like it, it's a really big game and i know there's a lot of things that they have put time and effort into like the ship looks awesome as well the map looks crazy pretty. <coughs> like just looking around the map if you go past something that has a black hole all of the light actually shifts around it. oh like, nice oh, it's cool. ju- just that map alone is gorgeous and yeah there's a ton of variety of planets and different things to do on them there are things called anomalies which Basically means that there is something on a planet that is uh, you can interact. Right, you got to go mine it or you can mine or it. You land can do that without there, even right? landing on it. Yeah. There are missions where you can get it on foot or things where you can use the nomad, which by the yeah, way I, I really say. like. Oh, but you really liked Mako too. That is true. <laughs> yeah, I like I like vehicles. I like the Mako too, Marty. Wow. Yeah. Well, deal with it. Turns out half of this table can be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Question How about, about. How do you feel about the Mako? <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm indifferent. <laughs> your, your future on this show rough. depends on it. <laughs> indifference does not count as one for you. What, De- what would Destin say? I, Destin would say it's perfect, and I played as a guy. That yeah, <laughs> yeah. sums it up. Yeah. Uh, as someone who's never played um, a any boy, Mako. <laughs> and and I, I know you didn't want to talk about like narrative too much, so we can keep this as a simple yes or no. Can I play Andromeda and yes. enjoy it? Yep. Okay. You don't need any prior knowledge of Mass Effect. I think it will. Uh, help in that you know there'll be alien races that you recognize sure. and you'll understand the lore a little bit better but i absolutely from what i played do not think that you need because this game actually does look cool but i'm just like so like just don't know anything about the series totally so. you'll and totally be fine you, know, you were talking about the look of it and how uh you know the, the different planets and how varied it is so the aliens look good it's just the humans that look a little bit interesting and so on that note i want to ask you remember i mean most people won't realize or care but they they moved this uh, un, it was Unreal Engine for the original trilogy and they moved over to their own in-house Frostbite. So yep. mm. it's does, do you think it does it still feel like it it looks and feels like Mass Effect even with the technology change? I mean, it looks it's hard to say. It feels like a new game. It really does. And That's you know, good. It's, it's been a long time since Mass Effect Three. Um, there are definitely elements of the HUD and the way that the ships look uh, that in design or yeah i guess design is the right word uh definitely taken from previous things we've seen in mass Effect. so it's it's consistent in art yeah. style is what i would say but it does look very different um and you know one of the things that i particularly liked is those planets that i went to looking dramatically different i think is so important mm-hmm. um they didn't so much you know in mass effect one the planets and the environments you you see it kind of forgettable but right there's a planet that you go to in andromeda that has floating pillars, has like green and red. There's random things of lightning that just spark out of these rocks everywhere. Like it's just, there's so many things that you just wouldn't imagine. And then sort of in the middle of it, there's just this tree and you don't know why it's there. And it's just all of these different things that are pieced together. Whereas I feel like I keep thinking of destiny and being like, you know, I wanted the planet variety so badly in that. And it felt like the same kind of thing, just reskinned a lot. Mm -hmm. This totally feels like different places completely. So it feels like a, like you're in a big universe then. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's all. Yep. See that and that's that's a big sort of uh almost unspoken thing that I want out of Mass Effect. Right. For so it that's to feel cuz that's that's one reason, you know, a lot of people everybody has their own favorite Mass Effect. A lot of people choose 2. 2 is my least favorite because oh, wow. for me, part of that is 2 feels the least vast. Mm. You know, the the Citadel is is a is like two hallways yeah and it's you know it's just a lot of more corridor action and and that's what i loved about one and three brought brought some of that back so that that makes me it really happy definitely to hear feels vast um and the things that i really like mass effect for are the world building and especially how subtly that is done i don't think that's quite as subtle in andromeda i think some of the dialogue is uh, very blatant it's like 
this is what's happening. This is what's happening. This is what's happening. Instead of having you piece it together really slowly, that's only based on like the first hour or so, though it could completely fix that up right. the introductory parts. And then uh, I also really like weird aliens and, and learning things about those, and that is absolutely present as well. Nice. Um, the combat is generally my least favorite part of Mass Effect games, and I don't know how much combat this is going to have, but I did only really do it on one planet. Um, the other planets... I didn't shoot anything at all, and what is there for the combat is fun for sure. Excellent. Yeah. So what are you doing when you're not shooting? Talking to talking to people. Just like uh, falling in love with aliens. Yeah. How's the, quote, with aliens? how's the quote? Good banging. I didn't get to do any what? banging. Yeah. <laughs> Whose that's, quote is that? That's no, the developer. Pretty good banging. Oh, yeah. Pretty good oh, banging. Okay. Uh, I didn't get to do any of that, but uh, you know, I did have a lot of conversations with uh, the aliens on my ship, and one thing that was really cool is two of them discussed their religion. And we just had like civil disagreements. Like huh. it was like, yeah, I don't agree with that, but I guess having a, a diverse array of religions, like there was just a conversation that I kind of accidentally came across where right. they were arguing about the existence of a god. And I was like, this is the kind of stuff that I want to talk about aliens. Like this is what I want to talk to these people about. And it was it was cool. Uh, there was some really interesting insight there. Really cool. Yeah. Uh, to dial back to your question about what you do on planets, um, I should mention the scanner. There's this new thing called a scanner that you have with you from the very, very start of the game, and you have to scan things for research research data, which is uh, shortened to RD. That is what you use to craft things, and the crafting okay. in Andromeda is pretty extensive. You can craft Wait. armor, and you can craft weapons, and uh, you have to basically buy blueprints, which all have different uh, rarities as bronze, silver, and gold. Obviously, gold being the rarest of those. Mm -hmm. There might even be more beyond that that I didn't see. Um, and then you buy which blueprints you want, and then you craft the items that you want, which you get um, using the research data, but also uh, items that you will just generally loot across uh, Can I make a space shotgun that shoots knives? So <laughs> the stuff that you can make in terms of weapons... I just wish I had more time with it yeah. because there is so much stuff that it's like you can turn a shotgun to, into a grenade launcher, but it's still a shotgun. Like it's like you can I'm basically mash. Yeah, 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 you can mash like any two Jericho. weapon types together. <laughs> I just I don't even know how it's going to work. It's crazy. Uh, it seems like you'll be able to do so much stuff, whereas the armor seems to be more catered to just like a damage boost if you're on low health or that kind of stuff um which i'm totally gonna mess around with a lot uh didn't seem like there was a whole lot of aesthetic options i really like being able to color coordinate mm. didn't seem like there was a ton of those options but th there was just so much stuff you could make and each of the weapons uh i think if it's a gold blueprint you get three augmentation slots meaning three like different kinds of stat right. boosts or yeah. whatever so yeah there's tons of stuff you can do um it's i think every single thing that you find will be able to be used towards something you will never just have an inventory full of stuff you don't need so i think the couple more questions our audience needs to know about mass effect uh since it's finally the first time anybody's gotten to play mm -hmm. it is how you know th there's no more paragon and renegade mm -hmm. system there, that sort of black and white light side dark side good evil dialogue uh how did the dialogue feel in terms of if you wanted to be uh rude or if you wanted to be nice or did you know how did, how was the dialogue system and then uh the class system, Bioware's mm -hmm. kind of made a, a big deal about, well, there is there is a class system, but you can kind of reallocate and change your your sort of skill set on the fly. What did you get to play around with there? Uh, well, we can talk about the class system first because there has been quite a bit of info about that online already. Some of you might have seen it. Um, you can pick a class, and it just gives you like a really small initial boost to something. It might give you an item like a, a drone. It, it just does something really minimal. But beyond that seemed beyond <laughs> kind of pointless uh in that i could still you have three skill trees which is tech biotics and combat and i could put my skill points into any of those at any point in time hmm. so it's like well that i get the diablo thing. three effect yeah kind or of? like dark souls that's yeah. dark souls yeah. you'd roll a starting class but within five or six levels you could just be whatever you want that's pretty mm -hmm. much exactly mm -hmm. what it's like yeah which uh gives you a lot of flexibility but at the same time uh i i didn't see the benefits or flaws of that system like I'm, i don't know how far that's going to evolve beyond what it is yeah i don't mind that because i feel like one of the weird things in mass effect one is right from the get-go you choose one of the six classes and you like you look at them and you're like well i don't really understand this yet because i haven't played the game and you're sort of locked into yeah. that without being able to make an educated yeah. decision on your first run through I, mean, I got screwed on that by not knowing to uh, level up my charm yeah you obviously charm and fitness and that's why you had Very a bad important. ashley and i had a wonderful ashley by the way how is she <laughs> I didn't see Ashley. This game is very far in the future, isn't it? Yes. She's probably fine. She may be dead. Don't say that. 
Oh, dang. Maybe it's like 600 years after cryostasis, that. Ryan. She's probably dead, but uh, don't say that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't see any She's flaws. Probably in that 600 process. years old somewhere. Nice. <laughs> I didn't see any flaws in that system. I didn't see any real perks either. It just. It. I mean, I guess it's good that it seems very flexible, so yeah. you can really do whatever okay. you want. Um, and then. My favorite thing about Mass Effect Andromeda from what I played so far is the changes to the Paragon and Renegade system. So instead of Go on. <laughs> instead of having just sort of good and bad points, you approach dialogue and you have the option to answer something rationally or emotionally a lot hmm. of the time. I'm sure there will be more than just those two things, but answering something emotionally can be uh, compassionate or heartfelt or angry, and then answering it rationally would be, you know, rational and logical. So Instead of basically giving you this system where it's like you are good or you are bad, it gives you a lot more gray area. And there is a uh, counter that basically is a personality stat sheet. So what you're doing when you're making dialogue choices is actually choosing the tone and personality of your character rather than just whether they were a jerk 10 times or whether right. they were nice 10 times. So I think Interesting. I, I think this is a great evolution do you, of that mechanic. Uh, do you know what you're going to say, or is it literally just like you choose an emotion and no, then you get a response? No, it's the same as uh, Mass Effect okay. 1, where you know you get a line, you get an but idea. the character doesn't yeah. say the line. Sure, sure. but you like, I know what's going to happen. Yes, That's... it's exactly like that, yeah, which well, uh, I really like. And I'm excited to see how, uh, as I kind of said before, there's a lot of sort of banter in combat yeah. um, and characters talking to each other. And I'm wondering if, as I'm shaping my character through choosing emotional or rational uh, dialogue options, if eventually... Box. Yeah, I got you. Don't go yeah. logical. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If eventually uh, that will change how my character talks when I'm not controlling things. Yeah, that's It'll cool. It'll be really interesting. I like that. Yeah. So to sum up, it sounds like it is very clearly a new game, but... For the most part, from what it's, it's, it seems like it's it's heading in some very promising new directions. Yeah, there's some some stuff that I really like, some stuff that I don't like so much. But uh, right now, the way that I feel about everything is that you know I I don't know yet. Uh, I would really have to play more, and this is obviously going to be a huge game. Yeah. And uh, one thing that I do have to mention that could totally change on release is that it was very 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 buggy. Um, had multiple crashes, some really bad uh, visual glitches. Um, you know, things where a line of dialogue was supposed to be delivered and wasn't, so I was just stuck on a screen and couldn't exit out of that oh. screen. Um, you know, it is pre-release, though. Yeah, you and they got a month on, ago. Are you allowed to say what you were playing on? Oh, we were playing on PCs. PC. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know what kind, but... They were, I mean, they were packing, they were packing some heat, those PCs. Yeah, they were solid, uh, but, you know, it was pre-release, obviously, mm -hmm. so it's, you know, the code's not done yet, but there were devs kind of over my shoulder. I would be like, hey, this happened. They'd be like, oh, that's weird. I'm like, mm. ooh, that's concerning. So hopefully it doesn't release like that, but I really wanted to mention it because it was this one time I previewed Assassin's Creed Unity and decided not to actually write a preview because it was so broken, and it's like, it came out broken. I should have written that preview. <laughs> so now I just kind of feel like I should always address Yeah, that I mean, it's, you know, it you can be honest great. about what we saw. You know, yeah. it's, it's not the final thing. It, yeah. it could tighten up, but as, as it was presented to us yes it was uh it had some it was very hard some rough around well, the we've, edges we've all played plenty of games that d uh, both things happen in the last month oh yeah. either the last month it's 25th hour everything comes together yep. and the game's amazing yep. or mm -hmm. 25th hour it's like well no this, this yeah it, so. it could absolutely yeah. be either way excellent um, yeah overall you know we're gonna have a bunch more coverage up yes plenty more to come from mass effect andromeda uh we've got yeah we've got like a month to yeah yeah. To pack in is to see what kind of coverage we can cook up. So, yeah. you see any Krogans? Yeah, I that's cool. Krogans. Big fan. All right. Yeah. Nice. Good talk. <laughs> End on a good note there. Uh, all right. News wise, there's not a lot. Marty, slow week, my friend. Yes, it's a very slow week. I heard it was a slow week on on your PlayStation podcast well, as yeah, well. well. We got to talk about Horizon <laughs> for forty five minutes. So well, we're not going to do that. No. No. But uh, yeah, I what I did want to talk about this was classic unlocked scenario happens every time. We thought maybe 2017 was going to be different there for a little while. No. 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 No, not at all. Uh, we had to record on Tuesday last week because reasons, uh, and then the show published. We held it for Thursday at like 12.01 a.m. Because, of the, Halo because of the Halo Wars yeah. 2 embargo. So there was that gap between when we recorded and when we published it. And sure enough, we missed this. And that is Microsoft decided to move their E3 press conference from its usual Sunday morning, or pardon me, Monday morning, 11 a.m., no, 9.30 a.m. slot. It ends I wish 11. it was 11 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. Uh, they moved instead to Sunday, the same day as Bethesda. They're going to be at 2 p.m. Pacific. 
So uh, you, if you are curious to watch that, you you uh, might not need to request time off from work if you if you work a Monday to Friday situation. But this was they didn't really provide a, a reason per se, any sort of particular explanation. Just said, "Hey, mark your calendars. We're moving." Mm -hmm. So the question is why. Uh, you wrote the answer here. They're no, I wrote, I, wrote a, <laughs> I, I wrote a theory. Uh, the, 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 I mean, there's the, there's the fanboy theory, but yeah. there's, the, there's the, you know, we, of course, want to go mm -hmm. dig deeper than the fanboy what if, theory. What if they just had Why? trouble renting a venue on Monday morning? They were just like, oh, well, I guess we <laughs> Galen Center isn't available Monday morning. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. There's a uh, cutlery conference, so oh. we're going to have to move to C3? Sunday. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, everything comes down. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, so to put, this, not that. to put this into context, uh, for the past couple years, uh, Bethesda has had, I guess, yeah, Bethesda has had yeah. uh, the Sunday night slot. Yes. And then Monday was Microsoft in the morning, followed by EA, followed by Ubisoft, and then Sony capping it off at night. Correct. And then the following morning would be Nintendo, Nintendo Direct. Yeah. Um, this year, it's spread out over many more days because we have EA and EA Play on Saturday. Yep. Don't remind me. I, I'm reminding you. That's, Thanks. You run previous. You that's, kinda, I you know it's my job. Of this. Please. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's only at, February. And as of Sunday right now, we have uh, you know Microsoft and uh Bethesda, and then we don't know when Ubisoft and Sony are going to do theirs. We assume it's the same, but maybe mm -hmm. it's not. Um, but a good theory is that so Microsoft gets all the headlines from 9 in the morning to mm -hmm. 11 in the morning, and then two hours later, Battlefield, Battlefront, mm -hmm. Mirror's yep. Edge, Mass Effect. Mass Effect gets announced, and then two hours later, Assassin's Creed and Watch Dogs and all that stuff gets announced. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the night, Sony, for Mr. the past Caffeine. few years, has had a really great conference, and so mm -hmm. they show stuff, granted stuff we're not going to play for many years, <laughs> yeah. but, stuff like, years. <laughs> but stuff like God of War and Spider-Man and uh, Death Stranding. So I feel like it's one of those things that by the end of the day, certain people have just forgotten what Microsoft showed because mm -hmm. you've been just inundated with media all day. Yeah. And this allows, gives them room to breathe. I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. I, I really think that's it. I mean, I know there'll be, you know, there'll be some people that want to spin it a certain way, but I really, I really agree with you. Cause if you look, I, I'm always curious every year with Xbox, what's, how long will, does their stuff trend mm -hmm. on social media mm -hmm. until, and like last year it was, uh, or whatever year, maybe it was two years ago when Sea of Thieves was announced. Mm -hmm. It was like Sea of Thieves and Cuphead yeah. were the mm -hmm. last two that were still trending as like as the uh, EA or yeah the EA, EA conference yeah. had started and then they eventually tailed off. But I, I just think you're totally right. It's you know Microsoft goes on and hey for the last few years they've they've put on a really nice show mm -hmm. right they they haven't necessarily you know pulled out any crazy surprise bring the roof down announcements but they've they've shown boy they've shown such a really solid lineup of games for the last few couple of years they, pulled, they had a car on their stage this year remember that yeah yeah they do that every year now they do, do that every <laughs> year. so about but, the but yeah they uh they just th by the time even you're right even the afternoon but of course by the time you get to sony f six hours later it's well oh look what sony's looks sony's just taken over all the headlines mm -hmm. so yeah i think this is just a way for them to keep a news cycle absolutely just I think hang on to a news it's cycle. smart and it's easy are they so are they announcing scorpio at e3 we don't know as of now yes we haven't heard of there being any pre-e3 scorpio event it could yeah. happen you know that sure. happened with xbox one yeah, they that happened with ps4 now, yeah there could be event. something in may for all we know but as of now we so assume the theory that i thought of is bethesda is the only publisher that was before them but you know, and now they're before yeah. every publisher except EA. Except EA. Oh, EA so they're still before. after EA. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. EA is Saturday. My thoughts were possibly if they do have Scorpio things to announce that then get baked into the Bethesda conference mm -hmm. and yep. baked or into Ubisoft the smart Ubisoft thinking. conference, yeah. they okay. would have to go way first to announce that. It's kind of like Watch Dogs really getting thought. announced before PS4 was announced, and it was like, here's Watch Dogs. It looks beautiful. Uh, they said next they, gen for that, I think. Right, but it's like they couldn't like no say the consoles, right? And it's like we all know Scorpio is a thing. They announced it at E3 last year, but it's like if they want to be able to say 
you know, if Bethesda this is says, running on Scorpio, here's Prey, yeah. and this is Prey running on Scorpio. Yeah. They can't say that if the Scorpio hasn't been announced yet. That's a really yeah. good idea. I mean, That's a great I point. I can totally imagine, I mean, whatever Scorpio's called, that demos during Bethesda and during Ubisoft are going to have little, like, lower thirds that say powered by Scorpio. Mm-hmm. And it's going to look really good because it's going to be running on more powerful hardware. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. yeah strong call because then, yeah, if it, even, even at Bethesda that night, if they show Wolfenstein. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Or Evil Within. It or, could be, you know. like, yeah, it could be here. And, and it's running on the the Xbox, whatever its official name is. Right, mm-hmm. right, right. So that I, that was just my theory. Is get I out like, yeah. ahead of all of the the publisher news. You know, what, Mark, you can stay. I like you better than Destin. Yeah. <laughs> oh dang! Finally. Sorry, Destin. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it took. Um, That's all it took. I, re- I also really hope their entire run of show doesn't leak beforehand like it did last year because that made it. Yeah. Yeah. That was less really exciting. unfortunate. Yeah. Well, we we read it and we were like, well, this can't be it. And then like three announcements in, we're like. All right, this is absolutely it. We yeah. just uh, had all our news stories prepped. So yeah. brutal, yeah. and it just t- it takes the fun out of it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, it's uh, and most people didn't see it. Obviously, of but, like we had to look at it because we were like, well, this helps us get our coverage up faster. Yeah. So don't do that. Like fire, the Final fire Fantasy that, release date, like. Oh, stuff yeah. like oh, that. Dang. Oh, dang. <laughs> that's, that's really yeah, sad. That's uh, don't worry. It wasn't the real release date. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's true. <laughs> Classic Greg and Tim. <laughs> Bethesda, after Microsoft announced theirs, Bethesda did semi-snarkily tweet, Sunday before E3, getting busy. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. <laughs> Bethesda E3 showcase will still be Sunday uh, p.m. Details soon. Uh, Bethesda, mm. creators of Sunday. I like how you say semi snockily. No, that's super snocky. <laughs> <laughs> this is incredibly snocky. You're like, uh, there, yeah, that was written by Todd Howard. It's crazy. <laughs> Well, it could be that like they didn't. Snarkiest man alive. He's not doing anything else. (laughs) They they were the ones who were like, well, let's go before everyone else because that gives us so much time in the spotlight. And then someone goes before them and they're like, damn it. Well, he is going super before everyone else now. That is true. Yeah. 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 Super before. What if Sony just does Friday? Oh, I would hate that. That's that super be duper terrible. before. Why? No, it'd be awesome. If everything E3 was spread just out. keeps getting longer. I know. E3 starts in June now. Like June 1st yeah. is E3 month. Yeah. No. Pretty much. Not doing it. You no, sort of have to. It's it's, it's right, your yeah. job. Yeah, Stop reminding your most, me of that. It's probably we need your, your most important week. <laughs> no, I feel like if any of us just say we're not doing it during E3, <laughs> that's a that's a quick firing. Didn't E3 used to be like three days? Yeah. Officially, now yeah. it's a, it's a, a well, it still week. is. It's actually yeah, it's, it's actually it starts, shorter. What Tuesday, right? E3 is officially shorter. It used to go officially to Friday. Mm. So now it's officially but now just it's Tuesday, officially Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday. Huh. But the unofficial days yeah. have have lengthened it uh, such that. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. Yep. But also open to the public this year. Yeah. We're stoked about that. We're uh, hopefully going to. Still gonna... haven't sold out other tickets. Really? <laughs> yeah. Really? Oh, wow. That's I thought the a... 15K would go up right away. Not a great sign. Yeah. I was just but... surprised because, like, PAX tickets they get scooped up so quickly. And yeah, PAX has true. a ton of more people. So. Yeah. yeah. I'm wondering if people are just, like, I could buy a ticket to what they know is, at the end of the day, an industry event. And they're just like, yeah. you know, where it's like PAX is, like, man. For yeah. I don't, think e- I don't think they did a good job of saying what you get with the ticket. Yeah, fair like, point. Also, yeah. really expensive. Also, two hundred fifty dollars yes. c- puts you like a hefty chunk into a Scorpio. Yeah. Yep. Or gets you a ton of games on anything else. How much or is a PAX ticket? I think it's like a hundred. Yeah, it, it probably is the price. Yeah. I, I've seen people saying, you know, they'd love to go, but they also can't get the flights and the hotel and all that stuff to get there. It's also, I imagine hotels are crazy expensive, expensive during E three. Well, yeah. we we warned people. Was it? La- was like it was last week's show. That yeah, it hotels. During E3, mm-hmm. anywhere in L.A., like anywhere even remotely close to downtown, huge nightmare. Mm-hmm. Also, watch out for Airbnbs if you think that's the trick canceled. because they cancel them because most people realize, oh, that's E3 week. I'm renting out for super cheap. So then they cancel it and they jack their prices up because the whoever's renting their house out or whatever doesn't realize oh. that it's E3 week. I'm going to put this on the ground. Please do. <laughs> rattle, <laughs> rattle that glass table. Uh, for those of you who are attending, we're, we're going to hope to figure out some way to have an official meetup, hang out with you guys. Yep. I've heard from plenty of people on Twitter that are super <laughs> excited to to try and get together with us, and I'm sure we will figure that out be awesome. in the coming weeks. Yeah. I thought you said you're not going to do it. You're not going to do E3? I'm not going to do it on Friday. Okay. Mm. That's, you I, refuse? I will show up. <laughs> you refuse? I'll be there for the Microsoft conference okay. on Sunday. <laughs> You're not going to do E3? You're not going to do E3? <laughs> <laughs> if my boss tells me to, I, I got to do what I got to do. That's that's the life. I'm excited. I don't complain. It's, it's fun. I st- I'll tell you, I, really, I still love E3 yeah, every year. Same, dude. Every year. I've this been, E3 is going to be a good E3, I think. I've been lucky enough. Uh, I think I've done... Th- it's 12 or 13 of them. Oh, my Lord. Something like that. This I think this will be 13 or 14 for me. And it's, this it, will it be really my second. is. <laughs> it is the, it's the unwrapping your presents on Christmas morning yeah, when you're E3 a kid. rules. It's, it's so exciting. It's so great. It's, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's 
especially the older I get. It's tiring and it's, uh, you know, it's it's exhausting. But gosh, it's so much fun, and you get to see, you know, you get to see in our in our case, uh, like game developers that that maybe had shipped something that like like last year I got to see Ralph Fulton, uh, who you know I hadn't seen since Horizon Two, and here he was coming around with Horizon Forza Horizon Three, and mm -hmm. yeah, it's just E three is awesome, and I'm stoked for everybody who's getting to go for the first time. Well, and everyone's always talked about like the atmosphere and the like the war room, and I experienced it for the first time last year, and it's uh, pretty much undescribable. <laughs> like it's really really cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. so like just having all your friends just be like. <gasps> That's what we do all our uh, work out of for uh, mm -hmm. E3. So it's like basically this IGN hub that we rent out in LA where, yep. you know, there's people just writing previews and uh, we watch all the live streams in there yeah. and just people being excited and clapping and cheering. And it's, it's yeah, really it's, cool. a, it's a very cool environment. Well, it, that's the week that really puts the enthusiast in enthusiast media for us, I think, more than more than any other yeah, week. Totally. It's, it's great. Mm -hmm. We actually, uh, at our 20th anniversary party, gave someone the opportunity to... Come oh, that's us? right. Yeah, the guy who won the Mario Maker thing. Yeah. He's, he's going to be Fran's personal, personal assistant, assistant. So at he'll, E3 he'll this year. See the war room and all that Why stuff? did he win a contest and then get punished? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know how that, that how, how we, how we put year. him on that one. <laughs> but yeah, that's cool. Carrying around Fran's hair products. <laughs> it's going to be a, several of them. Interesting. Yeah, I'm like, getting to like the a, airport with that. It's like a trench coat of open it up instead of watches. It's very lengths of combs. Do you know how many fixes his hair multiple times a day? Yes, absolutely. Once? He does? Are you kidding me? Have you seen the, you the coif like on that man? It yeah. is it is well Yeah, it is pretty well, well taken care of. Coif. He did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you guys you still with me? Yeah, yeah we're still here. With yeah, me we're over here. there. We're here. The only real other interesting news item of the week is the payday three. I must have missed the announcement of this. Um, I mean, it is a super successful. It's become a super successful series. This is one of those where I've I've always wanted to play this, but just haven't. But you haven't never played, played Payday? I haven't played them. Oh, Payday Two is great. I know. Yeah, they're just four player co op heist. There's still still things. a lot of people playing that online. And I know it's on Xbox. It's on PC. It's on everything. But yeah, Payday Three is uh, well underway. The CEO of Starbreeze. Went so far as to say that Payday 3 will, quote, enjoy as much time as we deem needed for development and, quote, will be done when it's done. He went on to note that Payday is the company's single most important brand today and the cornerstone of our business, and we will treat it accordingly. So it's great to hear that that uh, they seem to realize what they've got on their hands and they're just going to take their sweet time and make a, make the best Payday possible. You guys reckon it'll be a full play a co-op high skate? Hope so. Do you think they're going to have a, a booth right at the front of E3? <laughs> <laughs> every Literally year. every E3 I've every been to. They're year, the yeah. very first thing when you just... But, well, like on, by the the one, on the one hall. On the one the, hall. Uh, yeah. I, can't, I can't never remember. I've been there 14 times. I can't remember which hall is which. Uh, it rotates every year. That like, would be they're on a, uh, E3. Like, it's the like convention center is actually on a Lazy Susan. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that's why, people get, messing with that's you, why right? people get nauseous sometimes. Right. Yeah. Is Lazy Susan offensive? I probably shouldn't say that. That's a sorry, it's furniture. Well, that's isn't that's it? my mom. Right? Yeah, <laughs> that's how you. That's how you pass. That's how you pass the ketchup. Yeah. So uh, yeah, if you are a fan of Payday, uh, know that it is well underway and and being well cared for. So we'll keep an eye out for that one, and hopefully I'll get this. Is this will be the one I actually get a shot to yeah, play? Yeah, totally mm -hmm. should. I will. I'll make a point to you play have to it. Play day it. Hey. It's really cold. Should I here. play day it on payday? Just throwing that out there. Hey. 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 <laughs> what's, right. what's happening? I Arthur Fonzarelli? Hey. hey. Stop it. Everyone, everyone stop it. Hey. You know there's a bronze statue of the Fonz in downtown Milwaukee? It's very strange. Really? I'm yeah. gonna, that is strange. Yeah. I'm going to jump over that on a motorcycle. So, oh, no. Uh, next time I'm in town. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's where you should go. You should see the bronze statue. There's snow there. Okay. I'll go there. Okay. Good. And you could you could just uh, take a quick trip and visit uh, Raven and mm -hmm. uh, is human, human head, head still up there? Yeah. And I feel like you could hook that up, Ryan. I, I you could, would be a my, good person to do. I that. mean, one of my I, one of my best friends works at Raven. There, right. you know, there you go. Yeah. Oh, I did too. Yeah. yeah. All right. Done. Cool. See, sounds good. It's all it's all set all right. for hey. you. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> uh, let's move along. I'm going to go to Mark Medina. Mark, what? what can we spend our money on this week? Marketplace report down here. We didn't plan this. Halo Wars 2, Ryan McCaffrey. Yes. Is out, is out on out Xbox and One and PC. We talked about that last week. Is our, yeah. our, our review up? Dan review Final it score's up seven. Give it a seven. Yeah. I played it. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I, James I, Duggan has played it way more than me. I don't know if he likes it that much. Sounds like a James Duggan thing. It does, right? actually. He plays a lot right? of games that he doesn't necessarily yeah. like that much. Yeah. 
Uh, but uh, I played it. It was pretty fun. I like RTSs. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, uh, it's I, t I gave you my my thoughts on it last week. It's it's good stuff. It's fun. Rest in peace. It's good. It's Westwood. a nice change of pace for Halo. For digital, Zombie Vikings for twelve dollars. Shift happens. As it it does sometimes it does. It does. Shift does happen for fifteen dollars. Yeah. Vaccine for ten dollars. That I actually is an appealing game name to me. Jenny McCarthy won't be playing that game. We made a vaccine joke this week on Beyond. What? Okay. <laughs> what? We even brought up Jenny McCarthy. I mean, she. Oh. she well, it wasn't. Like oh no, something. it was totally. Max made the exact same joke because the game's going to PSN. Oh. Yeah. I mean, how? What does it? What does it say about Jenny McCarthy? Where, when you hear her name, that's the first thing you think. You don't think Incredible. of Playboy. You don't think of her uh, television appearances yeah. and her television roles. Her you think of her marriage to Tom uh, Green. I you think of you think no of her, uh, her her vaccine stance. Oh yeah, she's anti-vaccine. Okay. Yeah. Got it. She's not a fan. Typo Man for thirteen dollars. I'd never I heard of this game, game. It looks until good. I've seen some video footage yeah. of it. And I'm like, Game's pretty oh. cool. Okay. Yeah, I previewed it at PAX a couple Seems years cool. ago. And then Vertical Drop Heroes HD. It's in high def now, Ryan. Mm -hmm. Better than low def. Finally. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we're, we're going to start a thing soon where we're getting uh, codes for all these games early. So we're going to actually play a little bit of them. And so we yes. can, I could do more things than uh, just make fun of their names. Right. Okay. I will still make fun of their names. But yes. I will do Still, that. Yeah, we reserve that right. <laughs> but, I will, sure. but I will also May uh, mention yeah. something I about I really <laughs> like the name Vaccine because uh, it makes me think of... Um, Plague Inc.? I just want to know what kind of game, game it is. Like, what... Anybody? No? Okay. Well, I just, there's a, uh, I, th I think the board game is called <laughs> have to look Outbreak. Or, or Pandemic? Might be Pandemic oh, that I'm thinking of. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's yeah, what yeah. it makes me think of. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever played... Uh, what a good studio Plague that was. Inc. Yeah, right. Plague, Plague Inc. It's a mobile game where you you are pretty much... Uh, maintaining a virus and growing it so that in hopes of killing everyone in the world. Oh, I've and it's like a map seen, of the world and yeah, you're like I've upgrading the virus. Of that. It's pretty cool. I like those kinds of games. Yeah. <laughs> this is the good version of that. Vaccine. <laughs> yeah, what happens. Awesome. You play through Plague Inc. This and is the then sequel. The sequel, Vaccine. You heal everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Plague Anything else out there, Mark? Uh, What's on the marketplace? Games with oh, gold? Oh, we keep going. Keep going, okay. my friend. This part of the show, it's all you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, wait, I made a video about this. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's see. Available all of February on the Games with Gold is Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time. Really weird game, but it's pretty fun. Marty it likes it. Cool I like yeah. it quite a bit. Yeah, yeah it was really fun. Uh, let's see here. February 16th through March 15th, we have Project Cars Digital Edition. The game's really pretty. Yeah, if you like them race cars. Yeah. The music between the menus is really good, too, surprisingly. It's very weird. There you go. Uh, Monkey Island 2 that's Special done. Edition. Oh, that's yeah, done. That's done. We're done. Sorry, Monkey Island. And then Star Wars The Force Unleashed, which is the game I was playing to make this video, and I had no less than 10 people stop by my desk saying, why are you playing at Star Wars <laughs> The Force Unleashed? <laughs> now, we like, trust now, me. now we know. It's for work. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and we just had March, just today, before we went on the air, March's yeah. Games with Gold got announced. Oh, yeah. They sure did. I've yet to make this video. <laughs> <laughs> Get a head start. It's coming, guys. Uh, Layers of Fear, available all of March. Evolve, uh, Ultimate Edition. Vince likes that game. Uh, that's not till the 16th through the 15th. Borderlands 2 is for the first half of March. It's a great game. And uh, Heavy Weapon for the last half of March. I yeah, I don't know that is either, but the that's a it's a pretty solid line. It's a solid it is. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Layers of Fear is a survival horror game. I and have played Layers of Fear. Uh yeah. I think Chloe reviewed that, didn't like it so much. Mm -hmm. Um I you know, I didn't finish it, but I did find elements of it really scary. It's you, you play kind of a mad artist mm -hmm. who right. uh sort of has like an artist block and yeah. it's sort of like the wall around you seems to decay in response to you not being able to get through this it's, it feels like dorian gray it's like a psychological it's a cool horror concept. game it right? is it cool is concept. um and I, yeah i liked what i played of it and uh, evolve i really wonder if that's still active well oh, that's and that's i was just going to say hopefully uh, with it being free in the uh second half of march yeah that'll spike the player base and yeah. if it's free people can you know, hop in give it a shot give it a try it well, is it, it, it know, went free to play for pc yeah. right months mm -hmm. ago yeah. yes and i think they saw a spike mm -hmm. so i'm wondering so. but it never but it, you know, of course but then it never went free for consoles i think it was like a planned thing that Game they ended up should have always not been free doing to play. it uh well, so i'm wondering yeah. <laughs> i'm wondering if yeah you're gonna see a little jump because yeah good and stuff then, uh, borderlands 2 obviously people like it it's sure. good why not pretty good let's you, you do... can get the handsome collection but 
this is free. Mm-hmm. They're actually, uh, I was at Toy Fair over the weekend. There are actually a bunch of um, Borderlands figures coming out, and it was. Have they not had them yet? I believe they have. Yeah, they, they definitely have. The Claptrap yeah. robot. But, um, yeah, I remember. I think it's cool. Fallen. Yeah, I have that. I know. Uh, I was going to steal it from you at the Christmas thingy. We do a Christmas thing where we give gifts, and you, know, you, have, you can steal them exchange. from each other twice. But I was going I, I for the up. robot. And, uh, well, I think that it. was the most expensive thing in the room. Oh, definitely. So I was pretty happy that I got that. But I also really <laughs> wanted that plush dog that was the This Is oh, Fine. Oh, yeah. The This Is Fine dog. Did Jobert end yeah. up with that? Who no, Kalila. Kalila. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. She got it. Someone stole it, and then she stole it back. I, right. That was me who stole it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. All right. Well, that's the game. That's the game. Uh, that let's like to, uh, to do talk about Christmas. Unlock Block Trivia. Okay. Uh, Mark, chance for you to get on the board where these two have not even managed to do so all year. Shut up. So every, every time you guys come out of recording, Destin talks about oh yeah, how he, uh, he high cheats. his points He are. cheats. As soon as he looks at this, he yeah, looks up the answer. I'd like to oh, note okay. that I took a little extra editorial care uh, in my random searches this this for this week. Because, Marty, you yourself requested. Yeah, I requested banjo a banjo uh, question I knew. Yeah, and you provided me with a banjo question I didn't. Which is what's this banjo collect? <laughs> which is, uh, Does that mean the next time we get a modern question? Because these are all old all people. You love banjo. I do. You have no so excuse. But I was Neither so one young you. when it came out. But you, but we played it like a year ago. She's this is a question about <laughs> the game being in early development when um, I would have been. But three a, years a true, old. a true banjo fan would know the full history. That's fair. Of banjo, That's fair. and uh, so Justin Walker is all should already be just, just stoked because he's got you. Fighting each other, you're, you're arguing amongst yourselves. No, we argue all the time over yeah, his banjo <laughs> question. You sit so, near us. China. We argue constantly. Uh, Justin Walker from Philadelphia. He's going to win himself a video game, courtesy of uh, well, one of a few different people, either his fellow Unlock listeners, or uh, there's a copy of Dishonored Two up for grabs that Albert Menefee the Fourth kindly donated, and the developers Rebellion. Of, uh, of Sniper Elite 4. I've got uh, like two more codes for that. We gave one away last week. So, uh, Justin, you've got your choice. We'll be in touch. And Justin asks this Banjo-Kazooie question for the three of you here. Mm. In Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo has a sister named Tootie. However, in early development, she had a different name. Which of the following was her original name? Was it Starry, Clarinet, Madeline, or Piccolo? Marty, you've already been raging that yeah. you don't know. No, I'm, I'm angry. <laughs> Mark, any idea? Uh, as the world's biggest Banjo Kazooie fan, mm-hmm. which I oh, certainly oh, no, okay. I, no. 100% <laughs> not. Uh, I've played it like once. Uh, I went with D Piccolo. Okay. Any that, logic there, or just a just a guess? What do you say? None at all. Uh, I don't know. For some reason, I can see it on the screen. And uh, that's what I got. all right. So you're just just a vision. So, Yes. It's a, it's it a, came to me. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to be real scared that. if that's the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alana, I'm going to go your way now. I'm going with A, Starry. Okay. Marty? I'm also going with D, Piccolo, because Banjo and Kazooie are named after instruments. Okay. And they're named after the instruments they play in the opening. Okay. And I believe Tootie is playing a piccolo in the opening cutscene. My, mm. my logic was that they would change it from Starry because it was not an instrument. Like they like codenamed a star, and then we're like, oh, mm. that's the only one that's not an instrument, so we better change. If, it. Oh, so if, we change it to that classic two D. <laughs> if it ends up being Piccolo, that is the same logic I went with. Whatever Marty said. Whatever Marty said. Yeah. Uh, well, Mr. Medina, you are a smart man, Damn Marty, it. as well. It is in fact D Piccolo. So uh, well done. You, <laughs> you're uh, both on the board. Wait, hold on. So I'm tied with Marty. Yes. yes. You are tied with Marty. Sweet. <laughs> in three months when I'm back <laughs> hopefully we're still tied. man I would have a rough three months uh, well it has been nearly two it's, months uh, points. yeah all right good stuff everybody uh thank you to Justin Walker for infuriating the panel but ultimately leading them to some some sound logic that at mm-hmm. least in in Marty's case yeah was okay. the correct way to go <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing, Ryan, is in the opening, they're all playing instruments of what their name is. Oh. Yeah. And so I figured, yeah. you know, Incredible. that 2D is playing a piccolo. Right. She's yeah. clearly playing a 2D. Okay. <laughs> she's just, she's also, fart? I didn't know that a piccolo was an instrument. <laughs> really? 
Ultra. It's why neither is the Mad One. Doesn't everybody have to play those in elementary school? No, we call no, those recorders. We play oh, recorders. We call right. those recorders okay, as well. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah. a pickle is. The little, little yeah, three piece it's... thingy. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Oh, we also. Play but you have to like, and then you have to dip the reeds in like some alcohol solution mine to get all your. Mine didn't have a reed. That was the start of my germ problem. <laughs> I didn't have a read. Mine was just that's plastic. a clarinet. That's a clarinet. Yeah. Well, whatever. The little mouthpiece. There was. N- oh, that is a clarinet. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, what are you, you putting reeds in your instruments? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Give me a break. It's been a long time since I've been in elementary school. I'm old. No. Uh, okay. Let's leave. Okay. Let's let's end on a low note, as we like to do every week. Talking about, we had a point. We. <laughs> that's true. Oh, great. I like you're, you're just <laughs> stiffened up. Yes. I feel so good. Feeling, feeling. You're gonna walk out of here standing tall. That's right. Uh. IGN Prime, you can subscribe to that, help keep the lights on, and get yourself an ad-free IGN experience. Give us 30 bucks for a year, and we'll give you no ads and some other beta codes and, and all uh, other fun digital things. So go to IGN.com slash Prime if you're interested in that. Uh, Marty, yes. what else? What, there's some cool thing going on. Yeah. Um, I mean, next week's huge, uh, just in general, with uh, GDC and the Switch launching and Logan and Horizon coming out and all that. But uh, one of the things I'm most excited about is uh, Monday, the 27th, from noon to 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, we're holding this really super awesome live stream that we're calling Save Point. Uh, we're partnering with uh, the folks at uh, the, who are, it's Frank Cifaldi and Steve Lynn, and they're sort of launching a Patreon crowdfunding campaign for video game preservation, which means they they have builds of uh, canceled games, rare games, That's unreleased so games, preview builds of games that are different than the games that were released, mm. uh, special edition consoles that they only made five oh, of. I wish I'd kept my review build of... Uh of NBA Elite 11. Oh, they have a boxed copy of NBA they Elite that they're oh, bringing out. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, which is insane that there is a boxed copy of a <laughs> yeah, game that got, got canceled. Yeah. Got you reviewed the game. I <laughs> reviewed it. Five point something OXM. And then it never came out. That's so weird. Which I probably overrated it, yeah. honestly. <laughs> even in that. Um, but it's super cool. So for five hours, we're going to be doing uh, Let's Plays of things that you've never seen before. That's let's great. Plays of a Zelda game you've never seen before. The CDI uh, one? Or is this uh, something, no, this is something else? This is a television. Oh, man. Which is... We're going to go into what the hell is a television was. It was a streaming service in the early 90s. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and there was a Zelda game that no one's ever played before. And so Brian sat down and played about an hour. That's of it. cool. Um, this yeah. sounds awesome. Yeah, it's going to be great. There's a bunch of us uh, at IGN going to be on, uh, as well as a bunch of guests. Uh, Mary Kish, uh, Alexa Ray Korea, uh, Andrew Renee, Mike Maharty, a bunch of developers. Um, just a ton of friends from across the industry are going to come in. And uh, yeah, super cool. So that's cool. just going to be live on IGN.com. IGN, YouTube.com IGN. slash IGN. Yep. And Twitch. Twitch. Twitch.tv Facebook. slash IGN. Yeah. Uh, we're pushing it really hard. And what time? Uh, it is noon to five p.m. on Monday Pacific, uh, Pacific time. time. So, yes. Yeah. Um, Excellent. Yeah, but check it out. It's gonna be really cool. Uh, you know, toss it a couple. If you think it's cool, toss the Patreon a couple bucks because this allows them to. You know, the the Patreon is going towards finding these things, preserving these things, ultimately building a space. And like, this is the like. One of this my is our dream- hobby. Man. This is our hobby. Like this is the thing where, like, if these guys are given the proper funding, someday they might be able to get the preview build of Scalebound. You know, yeah. someday they might be able to get the you know preview build of of or whatever True Fable Fantasy Legends Live was. Online, True or Live yeah. Online. Milo and Kate. <laughs> yeah, like imagine if they were able to take like whatever the hell Elemental P was. Um, Starcraft Ghosts. Starcraft, Starcraft yeah. Ghosts. People in this office have played it. Goldfarb has played Starcraft played Ghosts. Yeah. yeah, you played it. Yeah, very briefly. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, uh, check that. Love out. It. It's really cool. Something I'm very proud of. And uh, Marty, where can we find you? What are you up to? At Mick Biggity. I've been up to this. That's the thing he's up to. That's it. That's all we need. Alana? I'm, I'm also going to be on that thing, I think. Uh, and one exciting thing is that Marty and I are going to play ukulele on Friday. Yeah. Mm. That's very exciting. Nice. We're going to play a couple hours of that. Um, so we'll be able to talk about that whenever the embargo's up. Yes. Maybe next week? I, think it's I next believe week. it is next week. Are we week. having a show next week? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's on the Maybe calendar. Okay. okay. It's going to happen. Okay. Um, and Ho- hopefully I've... Uh, I'm done losing my voice because I'm going to be doing a lot of talking next yeah, week. Yeah, you're going to be filming yeah. a lot of unfiltered. A lot of unfiltered. Hours worth. Many hours worth. Yeah. But it's it's going to be fun. Yeah. Can't cool. wait. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, I would totally just uh, suggest that you check out the uh, preview of Mass Effect Andromeda. Yes. And for those in San Francisco, I'm actually DJing uh, a GDC off the potty if you want to come by. There's details of that on my uh, social feeds. Excellent. You also had a bunch of cool toy stuff from Toy Fair. Oh, yeah. I just got back from Toy Fair. We've oh. been <laughs> covering that all weekend. Uh, tons of cool stuff has been... Uh, a bunch of Overwatch. There's been a ton of Zelda toys. Uh, lots of cool DBZ stuff. There's Portal stuff. Team Fortress. There's like How about that uh, Batman the Animated Series Batcave? Yeah, we that actually exclusively cool. announced that one. Yeah. Uh, I really want to get an unboxing of that. It's it's awesome. There's also Destiny. And I think our, our highest performing article was uh, 
these really, really creepy figures of Joker and Harley Quinn from uh, Play Arts Kai's line that just look mm. terrifying. Really cool. You saw that $10,000 Gallahorn. It did, yeah. Yeah, that Gallahorn was sweet. It's, it, that was just a prototype. Everyone didn't read the part where I said that the full release, like I, I wrote like a post that was like, this uh, prototype of the Iron Gallahorn from Destiny is $10,000, but the full like the final release version will be 149. Everyone's like ten thousand dollars. Like <laughs> it's going to release for 149. <laughs> you have to keep reading. <laughs> Get to the end of the article yep. before you set it up. Just a fire. sentence. Yeah. It was like a tweet. People didn't even read the 140 characters. It was insane. Oh, what can you do? Yeah. Mark Medina. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Mark underscore Medina. Uh, we allowed to talk about PlayStation stuff. I've been doing nothing but playing <laughs> sure, Horizon but Zero Dawn. And uh, we are eventually going to be able to post a ton of stuff. And so that is currently my week. Yeah, you've been making a bunch of videos from that game. But yes, Horizon Zero Dawn has been my life for about a week now. And uh, I can't wait to show everybody all the cool videos we've made. Excellent. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at DMC underscore Ryan. Uh, speaking of unfiltered, a new episode went up today as we record. Ed Boone, the co-creator of Mortal Kombat and, of course, uh, the the uh, director of in, both Injustice games. I got to go to his studio uh, last month with Destin and Vince and got to sit down. We, we shot the interview in their motion capture studio. Mm. Fortunately, cool. I did not have to wear the skin-tight suit with the Velcro balls on it while I interviewed him. That would have been kind of cool. The volume, they call it. No. Yeah. They I don't like, know why they call it that. It could have turned you into a character during the interview. Oh, have you ever been a video game character my, before? My, <laughs> the, my like, finish interview finisher. Just yeah. like drop the mic. That would have been great. Ryan wins. <laughs> <laughs> Fight. Flawless <laughs> interview. I, I really like the fact that uh, on this episode we talked about Mass Effect, Injustice, and Destiny. And Destin wasn't here for any, for of, it. any of it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Bittersweet. All right. Uh, so uh, we'll see you guys next week. As always, keep it tuned to IGN for all things Xbox. Bye. <laughs>